Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the second episode of Handmade House TV, where today I'm going to answer the most burning question that everyone seems to have with regard to handmade houses. How much does it cost? It never fails that whenever I post a photo or an image on my website or on, on Facebook that, uh, that, that if I get enough comments going on, by the way, we're up to well over 100,000 on the way toward 200,000 people following on Facebook. I really appreciate each and every one of you and I do my best to read as many comments as I can. But one of the comments that never fails that I get often is, how much? How much does it cost? And uh, it's, it's, it, there's definitely a sigh when I see it because I really want to answer the question, but I don't, I, people don't really quite have a grasp of what's entailed in the question. And today I'm going to answer the question but you're going to need to listen to everything I have to say in order to understand the complexity of it fully. And it never fails that when I try to answer via typing on the, on the, out, out on the email or, or posting on Facebook that the question will be repeated the next day. And so it's an endless cycle. So I'm really looking forward to, to getting this information out to you. And I'm, in, <laughs> I'm really grateful not to have to type it out anymore because it, it literally it takes me a half hour to hour to do it. And then uh, some, I'll, I'll rarely ever get a thank you from it uh, for, for my time and effort. Uh, generally, it's a sound of silence on the other end. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and people think that I'm perhaps being evasive in answering it. But let me del delve today into some of the complexities. Okay, first of all, uh, I build a variety of structures and I've been building them for 25 years. And these are homes that I have built. Uh, I will build a log cabin, then I'll go on to do a silo, then I'll do a farmhouse, I'll do a timber frame, and it might be a year or two, or two before I get around to building another log cabin. And it'll be an entirely different log cabin with entirely different features. And so there really isn't any, any mass production on my part as far as being able to calculate a consistent uh, cost on a consistent product because everything I build is unique. Uh, the people I build for is unique. And uh, anyway, I don't want to get too far ahead there. But uh, anyway, so there is that factor. Uh, the, the second factor is that when I, when I put up a picture of a, of a log cabin, it's of one that I built for an individual. Uh, and that I respect that individual. And I, don't, I never release where that cabin is located nor do I reveal the name of that particular client. It's a generic cabin for you to view, to inspect, and to see whether or not it's appropriate for you. But I don't want to destroy the privacy of the individual who I built that home for. And so likewise, if I were to, if you were to hire me to build your home, would you want me to tell the entire world how much you paid for it? Chances are that would be something that you would like to keep private between yourself. So I'm not able to reveal to anyone how much any particular cabin costs because I am respecting a particular person's privacy. Uh, the, ne the next issue is the fact that uh, a lot of the cabins like this one that I'm at today, I built it 25 years ago and cost and variables have changed infinitely over the course of several decades. So what something cost me then and what something would cost now are entirely two different things. Um, uh, ne next up is that, that I, like I said, I've never built the same project anywhere uh, similar, that, that each one of them is different than what the other one was. So your cabin, even if you like what you see, will be different. I can guarantee you they all change from the day you design it and plan it. Uh, even when you go get your building permit, you might think that the cabin that you see on the plans is what you'll end up with, but I've never built one that turned out exactly as I originally envisioned it. They are, it's an organic process. It's one that tends to change as things go along, uh, particularly if you want it done right, that things look different, feel different when they're, when they're reality versus uh, a pen, pencil scratched on a piece of paper. 
Uh, next up is, is, is what is included in the cost of a house. When you ask me how much does a house cost, uh, what is it that you're envisioning should be in that figure and what is it that I'm envisioning in that figure? And some people when they hear a figure they are assuming everything and but there are degrees of it like is land included in the price of it? That's that's a huge factor one side or the other is are, are the uh, the appendages uh, the, the road coming in the, uh, the electrical utility lines, the well, the septic tank, the, um, the landscaping, uh, outbuildings, features, mulch, sidewalks, uh, water lines, uh, you know, there's just, a, there's a lot of features that, you know, are, are we including those in, the, in when a price is given or are we not? Um, there's also the variable of who's going to build the cabin and that is, am, am I going to build it? or are you going to build the cabin or do you have another builder in line and the price can obviously fluctuate tremendously between those three um, and I've, I've had a lot of clients uh, who will who will tell me that they're intending to to work right alongside us throughout the entire project uh, I will give a quote as if that I can rely upon their labor and I never see them again or they make things worse. Uh, and I've had clients that will say, my brother-in-law is an electrician, so don't figure anything in for the wiring. And then the electrician comes in and tends to make a disaster of everything else, disrupts the and actually drives the cost of the cabin up. So there's a, there's a lot of variables in who's contributing to the cost of it as well. And then there's a, there's a factor of, of what, are, what do I figure in from the materials? A lot of the structures I build have a lot of stone in them and vintage materials, uh, vintage log cabins like this one behind me. Uh, in, in building a log cabin, I have found log cabins for as low as $500 and I have paid as much as $50,000 for it. So if I'm giving you an estimate on the, on the construction of a log cabin, which number do I put in place for the, just the cost of the logs there? Uh, same holds true for stone. I've had I've worked on projects where stone was available on the property to pick up for free that was already in piles, and I've had to go out to the stone yard and spend over three hundred dollars a ton for it. Um, and then then next, and you can see how many variables are going on here. But anyway, I've built uh, cabins side by side, uh, same size for different but for different people and not that far from each other and one cabin ended up costing twice as much as the other. Uh, I recently built uh, a log cabin that uh, the client heated it entirely with wood and he had the wood stove. Uh, the cost of his heating system was basically zero. Uh, he didn't want air conditioning, he just windows screens was fine with him. Uh, the other client that I worked for had me install a radiant heat system uh, that was heated by a, a gas furnace and uh, it also had air conditioning coils and ductwork run throughout the house for air conditioning and to top it off he wanted it to be a geothermal uh, most of the time so that the oil wouldn't be uh, burn up and run up his electric bill and so we installed a very expensive geothermal heating system to supply heat to this radiant floor heat system. And on top of that, he wanted it so that it could even be improved for the hot water in the house to bring in a, uh, a solar heating panels as well in order to supply yet more heat for the radiant floor system. So altogether, we were looking at a heating system of zero for the fellow that wanted the uh, the uh, the wood stove heat system and it was over a hundred thousand dollars for the other heating system. So without uh, without uh, knowing the specifics of that, and I had no clue before I began the construction of either of those cabins what the final outcome would be. A lot of times when uh, when we're when we're building a home, uh, the client won't choose what kind of roofing is until I get a bid from the roofer from it. And a lot of times, roofers don't want to bid on a roofer until they see it framed. So generally, when I build a home, I'll have the roof and, uh, framed out. I'll call the roofer out, and the roofer will give me several competitive bids: one for slate, one for copper, one for standing seam metal, and one for shingles. 
um, and uh, and I'll let the homeowner choose which type of roof he is. So there's so there's variables and things tend to change when prices are coming. Um, take copper for instance. Copper's price actually fluctuates minute by minute. You can get an app on your phone and watch the price of it vary, come up and down on a daily basis. When I go purchase copper the, at, at the local retailer, generally the price varies on a daily basis. So if I tell you how much a copper roof is today, the, right, the price of that same roof tomorrow will be different. You can lock it in, the price in, when you, when you write the check to the roofer and he purchases the copper and then you know what the fixed price is. But a lot of these features, such as the logs for your home and the copper roof and stuff like that, are not really locked in until you, uh, until you, uh, until you write the check, until you sit down and you go through all the options. And then there's, then there's the unknowns that even the people who build the same cookie cutter homes over, over, and over again, they've built a thousand of these and you're the thousand and one one to come in the door. Um, thousand and first one, I want to get my grammar correct there, sorry about that folks. Um, even, the, even that, there are unknown variables no matter how much you want to nail it down that uh, there's a rock clause in every contractor that is when it comes time to dig a foundation out, if you encounter uh, in digging the foundation that you've hit rock early on, uh, the builder can't, can't, uh, put his, can't go on food stamps in order for you to be able to bust through rock found on your, on your property. So uh, there's, there's added expense to that. I had uh, one client tell me years ago that I worked for um, a wonderful man. We built him a beautiful home. And uh, he made the comment, he said, just because a builder gives you a fixed price on the home uh, does not, should not create the illusion to anyone that that's how much the house is going to cost once it is complete. Because there are variables, unknowns, and a pile of changes that happen during the construction process of a home. And the more custom it is, the more that can vary, and the more it, uh, it can vary for you. Okay, so, um, and, and let, me, let me throw in this one, one last comment. It's a smart thing to want to know what your house cost. You need to know how much a house cost. It, it, it's not an unreasonable question to do. And, and what you're doing in asking it, what, what I think most people are doing when they ask it, is they're either looking to find out if it's possible for them to have the house, or perhaps they're looking for an excuse on why they can't have the house. I, I hope that second one isn't you. I hope that you're not seeking a price in order to seek an excuse in order to not obtain the dream home of yours. Because I firmly believe that the dream home that you want, you can have, and there's a way that you can have it. And let me share a little bit of that to you. Um, the uh, and, and I'll, I'll throw out and, and to, to, ex to expand upon to expand upon uh, the idea that some people are looking for an excuse, and that is that I can say this that in all of my years of people asking me that question, and there have been well over a hundred, and probably into the hundreds of people that have asked me that, never once has someone who whose first question was how much does it cost not a single one of them ever went forward and built their dream home. And so there's that awareness in my part that when this person's asking it, they're writing it off. They're, so this is a question that you need to have down your priority list. It, it cannot be your first question. Your, your first thoughts in your head is, this is what I want. And then the second one is, how can I achieve it? And there is a way, I promise you that, and that's the purpose of this series is to, is for me to share with you little by little how you and myself are going to get our next home. So the, there, there are lots of ways to reduce the cost of the house, but first of all, let's get in your head what the cost of a house is. And that is that you probably have a good idea in your head, or it wouldn't take a whole lot of looking on Zillow or to drive around your, the area you live in and to stop in and see a home of about the size 
that you want to live in, about the size that you want to build, about the size that you dream of having. And you, so you know, just from base to that, how much those normal cookie cutter stamped out houses cost. And you can use that as an excellent guideline in the construction of your home, of your handmade home. And that is that if you hire someone else to build your dream handmade home, it's going to cost more than those vinyl covered asphalt shingled places. Now the guys working on your home won't make any more money per hour than they do out there, but you're going to have to pay more for it because you're paying for all that higher quality craftsmanship and you're paying for that quality material. And it's worth every penny of it, but it's going to cost you more. Now there's a way to get that same home, to get your dream home, to get your handmade home cheaper than that home out there that you know of and you're aware of. So don't let the price of a home handmade home scare you off. The way you get that handmade home, the two biggest ways that you can save money and drop the cost of that is A, you shrink the size of that home. You don't need to start out with as big of a home as you're likely envisioning. You can start out small, add on into the future as your funds, as your funds increase, your savings increase from the joy of living in a smaller home. So if you shrink the size of a home by, by 50%, whoa, about ready to be attacked by a wasp there. <laughs> Obviously this is live TV. Uh, uh, if you shrink the cost of your house by half, the size of your house by half, you'll almost shrink the cost of it by half. Not quite. There's the value of diminishing returns the smaller a home gets, the more it costs per square foot. The bigger a home, the less per square foot it costs. Um, okay, so shrinking the home. And the second thing is, is we get back to that handmade houses. You're handmade. There's, if, the more you contribute to the construction of your home, the more you can drop the price of that house. And that's my mission, is to, is to not only encourage you to build smaller, build higher quality, to build a step at a time, but also for you to participate in the construction of your home. That, uh, that everything you do has a multiplier effect. And I'll get into that multiplier effect when I, maybe I have a chalkboard or something to write on to make all the notes and everything and show you out of there. But just if you undertake the design of your home, if you and we're going to we're going to draw plans if you take the handmade house academy there's two episodes in there where i show you detailed uh step by step how i draw plans and also i'm putting some of my plans up for sale uh, on the website too so look look for them they're bargain priced but you can but you'll get a good visualization of where how i draw plans it's not that complicated i'm not an architect by trade i'm just a good old boy a builder and you can draw your own plans and you can do them just as well as anybody else. The typical price of, a, of an architect is well into the thousands to draw you a set of plans. Uh, or if you hire them on a percentage basis, they can be as much as 5 to 10% of a home. I worked on a log cabin one time where the architect charged 33% of the cost of the home to the client. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't know as much about log cabins as I did, um, obviously. Um, so you can save a lot of money by drawing plans. If you are choose to be your own builder, if, if a, a builder earns his keep, I'm not going to ding dong builders, that's how I've earned my living, and believe me, they earn their keep, but it, nonetheless, it's it, being a homeowner builder, just being in charge of the construction of your home, of hiring the subcontractors and seeing that they do the, do the work properly, if you can undertake that aspect, you can knock 15% easily off the cost of your home. So if you do the design work and you just and you just supervise the construction of your home, you can drive the cost down by a full 20%. Um, that making your handmade home get it getting near competitive to what the vinyl clad uh, monotony things are out there in the world. So I encourage you to go that way. So uh, anyway, I hope that that somehow or another I've answered the question of hand how much is a handmade house. How much does a log cabin cost? How much does a stone house cost? There are just so many variables that a price cannot be given. 
but if you if, once you design your particular home and you nail down all the details of it and if you believe and you truly are going to stick with it then then you can start pricing and, and fixing things purchasing all the materials ahead and, and before long you'll have a fixed price on the on the price of your home but I can say that that uh, that it can be a monotonous trap and that people have hired me uh, to because they really wanted a nail down cost on the cost of it and everything else and so they authorized me to purchase the materials as I found them uh, log cabins, stone piles, flooring, what have you and uh, and uh, gave me a month to come up with what how much the house was going to cost before it did it and uh, I made all of the phone calls and priced all the material and cost it all out and everything else and I gave them a, a price it took me a full 80 hours of my time to generate that fixed bid for them for that particular project, uh, which is not inexpensive. It's not inexpensive to hire somebody for a full couple of weeks to do that and all the material were locked in place. And those very same people made so many changes, so many unknowns were happened through the construction of their house that the house in no way resembled the original design once we started and was, was not anywhere close in the, in the original cost of it. And they understood that. They see that. So, uh, so the cost of your home is not determined by the builder. The cost of your future home is determined by you and the selections that you make. So um, I, think, I think we covered it. I'm, I'm hoping that everyone gets a, is content with that particular answer. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Handmade House TV. Uh, I'm Noah Bradley. Uh, th that'll be next Wednesday. I hope you're on our email at, uh, list so that I can forward to you a, a summary of it and some show notes from this particular episode as well as what's coming in the next episode. I think you're going to like it. It's good stuff. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank uh, four more people. Well, maybe I'll just stick with two today. That's all I got on my list. But we've got plenty of people who are signing up in the Handmade House Academy. And uh, I've got uh, Ronald Abner and Stephen Roselle today. So thank you guys for signing on with the Handmade House Academy. It's great to have you on the inner circle. And uh, thank you for all your kind words that you've had to share. We'll talk to you on the flip side. See you next Wednesday.